Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Kingdom greetings to each and every one of you. I'm on here tonight. Tonight I have a very interesting topic that I want to share with you all. Uh, tonight I will be discussing the topic on false prophets. All this month we've been discussing the topic on prophets, the prophetic ministry. And tonight we're going to be discussing uh, false prophets. Amen. How to identify them. What do I do if I become... Uh, a victim of a false prophet we've been talking about false, uh, prophets all of this month uh, not only here on Facebook live but also on my kingdom global impact conference call uh, but just real briefly I have a brief announcement I see you all are joining me God bless you my brief announcement is this um, I will continue to be preaching about uh, false prophets for this entire month I'm on here every Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Amen. Um, also on my Kingdom Global Impact Conference call every first and third Fridays of every month at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Listen, if you haven't already, go ahead and get connected to my Dehema McLean like page. My Dehema McLean Ministries rather like page. Again, that's Dehema McLean Ministries like page for all the notification. Amen. Um, we have a very interesting topic tonight as I said we're gonna be talking about false prophets I want you to do me a favor go ahead and just invite some of your friends invite as many people as you can to this live broadcasting I promise you it's going to be a tremendous tremendous blessing uh, and so I just ask of you if you can go ahead and invite some of your people while I do the same in the meantime go ahead and enjoy the worship before we go ahead and get started I'm inviting some of my friends here so that when our audience build, then I'll uh, continue to and further proceed rather with this uh, this live broadcasting. So I want to thank you also very kindly for joining me. It's truly a pleasure to be back on here. I am always honored and elated when you can join me. Uh, for all of you who take the time out of your busy schedules to join me, uh, I am truly appreciative um, of that. Amen. Amen. And I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much. Um, this means a lot to me. I pray that you all tonight will be informed. All of you will be edified. Uh, that you would share this video with someone so that they too can be uh, spiritually enriched and blessed by tonight's message. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm just inviting some of my friends here. This should take me approximately one more minute before we get started. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. In the event we get uh, disconnected for some reason or we're experiencing technical difficulties, uh, I will give instructions as to whether we will uh, come back on for part two. Uh, if the if it drops, then we'll just go ahead and start restart the live broadcasting, uh, because I do want you all to be able to get this message in its entirety. I believe that it's going to be a tremendous blessing to someone on this evening. I want to thank you all once again for joining me. I truly love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I see you all. Hallelujah. I see you all joining me, and I'm getting ready to conclude. Uh, as far as uh, inviting some people please uh, when I am doing my live broadcasting uh, I would ask you so very kindly and humbly just to save your um, inboxes for another time so it does not interrupt the live broadcasting praise the Lord I'm gonna stop there hallelujah so um, I see my audience is building just very gradually Amen. Hallelujah. So just let me know uh, where you're coming from. Represent your city and state. Also let me know that you can hear and see me clearly. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Naomi. God bless you, Dennis. Juanita Jones, Aquila McLean, my sister, for joining me. Thank you so much. You're always very supportive. I see Marva, Val Valeria. God bless you. Cornelius Parks, Ryan. Cheryl Cohell, uh, Tony, CJ, Judgeson, God bless you, Miriam, Dennis, or Denise rather, Aloya, Robin, Antoinette, my son Anthony Scott, God bless you, uh, Prophet Linden, and so many under Andrew Ross. 
Colinius Edwards, Catherine Kinyard, Brian Duane Rose. Listen, you all are truly a tremendous blessing. I see my audience beginning to slowly build. Amen. So tonight, we're going to be talking about false prophets. I, I want you to hear this topic tonight because there's a lot of people that have been asking me about the prophetic ministry. You all, many people have been asking me about the prophetic ministry. Glory be to God. And they have uh, been confused. What is a real prophet? Uh, tonight, I want to help you to differentiate uh, what a false prophet is versus a true prophet. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this. And uh, we're going to get right into prayer tonight. And we'll get right into the topic. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you, Lord, for uh, tonight. Lord, we give you the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. God, for you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Father, there is none like you. God, we bless your matchless name. Hallelujah. For you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, I pray tonight that those who are listening, that they will be blessed by this teaching. That God, that this word will not fall on stony ground. But God, this word will germinate their hearts. And Father God, it will bring about an illumination to their spirit man. I thank you tonight, God, for who you are. Lord, I pray tonight that this utterance, this word, this teaching, amen, will, will strengthen them, will edify them, that will help to debunk the philosophies that they were taught. God, we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. I see you all joining me tonight. Uh, Pastor Dexter, I see Geraldine. God bless you. You're always a true supporter. I bless God for you. Tradice, God bless you. Amen. So tonight, I want to talk to you about false prophets false prophets all this month I've been talking about the prophetic ministry and the characteristics of a true prophet amen but tonight I want to talk to you amen about false prophets because there are a lot of people amen that are uh, have been having a difficulty of uh, differentiating and distinguishing what a true prophet is and as a result of that there are many people who have been deceived by false prophetic voices not just false prophetic voices but false apostolic voices false teachers amen and so tonight I believe that the mission that God has given me on the assignment that God has given me is is to expose and eliminate our uh, operations that comes up against the true prophetic ministry not only that but to expose and eliminate a witchcraft operation that's happening in the body of Christ and so you'll find very often that I'm always exposing falsehood amen so tonight I want you to listen to me and rather listen to the Holy Ghost uh, with your spirit ear tonight because I know that this message is going to help you this message is going to help many of you who have been taught the wrong thing amen that have been been, uh, falsely prophesied to and as a result of that the word did not come forth so tonight I want you to do me a favor go ahead and share this video with someone share this post this on your timeline also invite some of your friends to this live broadcasting uh, because I want them to be able to hear uh, the unadulterated infallible word of God uh, tonight we're gonna be talking about false prophets in Matthew chapter 7 verses 15 it says it like this it says beware of false prophets which come to you in, in, in uh, sheep's clothing but inwardly inwardly they are ravening wolves and ye shall know them by their fruit ye shall know them by their fruit I just want to stop right there for a second the Bible gives us a clear description of what a false prophet looks like a false prophet will come to you in sheep's clothing which means that they have a deceptive spirit which means that they are seducing spirits not only are they seducing spirits but they are very manipulative in nature hallelujah so oftentimes uh, we look uh, for a false prophet to be one that will physically appear <coughs> to be a false prophet or one that's uh, operating in witchcraft to look like a witch 
But I would say to you, uh, as I oftentimes say, uh, witches and false prophets do not come to you uh, 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 with a broom. They come with titles. I'm going to say that again for somebody uh, who needs to hear that. Witches oftentimes do not come with brooms or a black hat. They come to you with titles. Those who are false prophets do not come to you uh, displaying themselves or exhibiting themselves to be false prophets. Uh, you will see that they are they dress like you and I they have a camouflaging spirit uh, they oftentimes know how to blend in the church and and have a false pretentious spirit they have a false pretentious spirit uh, they even know how to blend in where whereby you'll see that even today that these false prophets they also carry a Kundalini spirit a Kundalini spirit which means that they also have the a false Holy Spirit. The Kundalini Spirit is a false Holy Spirit. And they also have a false anointing. A false anointing. But the reason why they are successful in blending themselves with everyone else is because... <coughs> We lack spiritual discernment, and not only do we lack spiritual discernment, but we lack the uh, in a, the ability to spiritually detect and see what's false from what's real. Hallelujah! Not only that is because we are we simply uh, are not spiritually inclined to what's uh, authentic, authentic uh, compared to that which is a counterfeit. And so the Bible says that we're not to look at the outward appearance of men uh, because oftentimes those who have an outward appearance of righteousness, it's those whom God has rejected. So righteousness is not displayed. <coughs> Excuse me. Righteousness is not displayed in a look. I want to tell you that right there. Righteousness or holiness uh, or, or one that's authentic is not displayed in a look. We oftentimes get sidetracked because we believe that a true prophet ought to have a prophet's gown on. <coughs> or if they use, excuse me, or if they use a uh, prophetic lingo, then, uh, then we believe that it's a true prophet. But the Bible says inwardly they are ravenous wolves. And so you can know a false prophet by their heart. It's the condition of their heart. Listen, I want you to stay with me tonight because I'm going to get deep into this. Excuse me. I'm going to get deeper into this teaching. Amen. And so it says by their fruit you shall know them. By their fruit, not their outward appearance. It's by their fruit you shall know them. Amen. And so, what is a false prophet? What is a false prophet? A false prophet is one who claims to have the gift of prophecy. They have the, they claim to have the gift of prophecy or divine inspiration given by God. So they will proclaim themselves to be one that has um, some sort of revelation. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm a little bit under the weather. <clears throat> they would say that that they have gotten an inspiration divine inspiration from god whereby god is speaking to them and that they have some sort of of a revelation that would help to transform your life do not leave me tonight because it's gonna bless you uh they often claim that they have the gift of prophecy that they can prophesy a word to you listen everybody who calls themselves a prophet is not a prophet i want you to understand that tonight because there's a lot of people today that saying that they're prophets I mentioned this in our last segment a lot of people are saying that they're prophets because all of a sudden uh, there are many people who have this this infatuation with being a prophet and as I said in retrospect nobody wants to be uh, uh, just a servant anymore anyone everyone wants to be a prophet and so you have to be careful of how people are exalting themselves now watch this false prophets uh, they prophesy lies contrary to the truth they do not speak truth in fact there is no truth in them uh, they will speak things contrary to that which is in the word of God 
And so they would say to you that they've received a revelation, but when you compare it to the word of God, you see that uh, the revelation in which they are uh, giving you has nothing to do with what the scripture says. Listen, anyone who's given you a prophetic word, it has to be in alignment with the word of God. If it's not in the in the alignment with the word of God, it is not a prophetic word. I want you to understand that oftentimes they are uh, false prophets are not uh, are, are truth tellers they speak lies and you can find that in jeremiah chapter 6 verses 13 i'm gonna help somebody tonight uh they deceive people uh, by saying uh that they've gotten a prophetic word or gotten a dream listen i want you to understand i want you to understand this one thing that you have to make sure that you are in your word make sure that you are studying your word because listen when you study your word you will not be easily deceived i want you to understand that i'm talking about the fundamentals tonight i'm gonna get deeper in this you will not be easily deceived you will not be deceived by the eloquence of speech because there are a lot of people who can articulate things well and it's a learned behavior they know how to uh, 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 successfully execute uh, 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 their, their, their presentation and make it sound good they will tell you all kinds of things of what God said he's going to do and what he's about to do and we use all these catchphrases but of a certainty you know uh, 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 that God did not speak and I'm going to tell you how you'll know the difference a false prophet is one who is threatened by a true prophet they're threatened by a true prophet so anytime a true prophet will come around you'll find that we oftentimes will bump head a, a true prophet a man cannot peacefully coexist with a false prophet and so you'll find that there will always be contention between the two because one is a representation of the demonic kingdom and then there's one is another is a representation of god's kingdom they are part of two separate kingdoms two separate entities two separate uh, uh, functions <coughs> and though they look alike though they look alike you will know the difference by the doctrine that they speak and so listen listen i need you to hear this you have to listen to the speech that's coming out of your mouth and so the bible says it like this by their fruit you shall know them i don't care how sophisticated they may sound i don't care how sophisticated they may look i do not care of what platform they're on listen a lot of them actually have international platforms now this is not an indictment to everyone but do not watch because they have a platform listen don't watch that don't watch them because they know how to preach really well or they know how to preach really loudly do not watch the fact that because you think that they may have giftings don't watch that the bible says to watch the fruit watch to see are they humble are they living in righteousness are they living in holiness uh, 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 are they uh are anointed by God do they carry the Holy Spirit do they carry the attitude and the characteristics of the Holy Spirit do they possess the attributes of the Holy Spirit these are things you want to look for as I mentioned to you in retrospect that I said that many have a Kundalini spirit a Kundalini is a false Holy Spirit so now you won't be able to effectively know the difference between a false prophet and a true prophet if you are not in God's presence. If you are not in his word and you are not in his presence, you will not know the difference. And so you have to learn how to become familiar with his voice to know of a certainty whether he's speaking or not. Listen, uh, this is why I oftentimes tell people, uh, don't be so excited uh, to go about trying to hear every voice voice out there okay don't be uh, running to these conferences or revivals and i'm not saying all of them are bad but don't be so infatuated by running to these things without first consulting the holy spirit because the bible says many false prophets have gone out into the world listen watch this i'm gonna help somebody tonight 
A false prophet. A false prophet is one who uses black or white magic. Are you hearing me today? Listen, please invite someone to this broadcasting and also stay with me because I want to bless you with this tonight. I'm going to bless somebody and help somebody tonight. They use black and white magic. What is black magic? Black magic is when uh, uh, supernatural powers uh, is, is used for evil intent. It's used to inflict harm on someone or for selfish purposes. A lot of these false prophets uses black magic. And so when you think that their power is being sourced from the Holy Spirit, their power really is coming from the satanic kingdom it's coming from the satanic kingdom a lot of times they are using black magic and so, so when you believe uh when you believe that they're giving you a prophetic word god bless you when you believe that they're giving you a prophetic word listen their their prophetic word is coming because they are dabbling into the dark arts i'm gonna help somebody tonight black magic and so they use it as a form to control people they will control you through black magic and so a lot of times there are many ministries and i'm not talking about all ministries but there are many ministries that have opened up they opened up and there are people flocking to the ministries because simply they are entertained by the entertainment but watch this watch this i'm gonna help somebody tonight a lot of them are dabbling in to the dark arts and so they understand and they know the prophetic is that which uh, draws people because people like to hear about their future people like to let know their next step their next move and so they know that the people are attracted to the anointing people know that they are attracted to the prophetic ministry and so they will get their powers uh, uh, from the dark world and dabble into dark practices and occultic practices and as they dabble into the occultic practices now they're using uh, uh what they call false prophecy and black magic to control the people so now here you are flocking to the church because they, they, they have an ability by your dark powers to to draw you and when they draw you they have the ability to trap you they can trap your spirit inside the, that particular church. I want you to hear this tonight. I want you to hear. I'm going to help somebody tonight. Listen, they have the ability to trap you inside their so-called ministry. Now you're wondering why you can't leave because you've been you've been manipulated. You've been so so uh, so caught up in their web that now you think you want to, to you're stuck in their ministry. You're stuck in their ministry. Now you have become their puppet. You've become a puppet and you become a victim, a prey for those who are operating with satanic powers. And now here you are, you're calling it the prophetic. You're calling that you're calling that the prophetic. And so you you are now manipulated and deceived to believe that wow, this particular pastor or prophet operate with such a grace or an anointing. And then now you go invite some of your friends. And here you are, you're stuck because you feel that they are offering you something, but you don't know that by this power of black magic, you are stuck in that ministry. And they will deceive you in so much that even if the truth was presented in front of you and you would see signs of them operating by the spirit of control you still won't leave their church you will see uh, other things happening in that ministry and and how things are operated you'll begin to see things that looks contrary to the word of god but you will still stay in that ministry because you've been so deceived and manipulated whereby it deceives you so much that your eyes are blinded you're blinded to the truth that you will never accept the reality that couldn't be that i am in a ministry or in a church where i have been manipulated where i have been controlled by black magic so guess what now uh, uh, uh now when you want to leave you can't leave 
There's a demonic soul tie that they have used through black magic to keep your soul wrapped up in that particular church or particular ministry uh, and you can't leave. You can't seem to break yourself free. This is what you know how false prophets are operating also in the spirit of witchcraft. They, they got you in a cauldron. They, a cauldron is a, a witch's pot. A witch's pot. They got you all stuck up in a, a cauldron. And they got you trapped in there. And they got you locked up in a cage where you can't seem to set yourself free. Right? right. And that, that's right. Not only ministries, but there's in different places. So you can't seem to set yourself free. And, and, and watch this. Watch this. When you find that you know that you've become uh, fallen under a ministry or a particular place. That's dealing with the dark arts because your life will begin to fall apart. Your life will begin to fall apart. You'll find that you'll lose your job. Now you're going through marital problems. You're going through issues with your family. You're going through issues on the job. Uh, you're under a spell. Hallelujah. You're under a spell where you can't seem to break yourself free from. Uh, 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 hexes and vexes and incantation has been done just to keep you at this place where we're there now uh, can keep you positioned so that you do not leave, so that you do not fulfill your destiny, so that you will stay right there and not move any farther. You're, that's right, woman of God. They have locked you up in the spiritual realm. And in order for you to be, break free, you only can break free through the ministry of deliverance. I want to help somebody tonight. I want to help somebody tonight. And so they practice dark arts. They practice dark arts. Hallelujah. Not only do they practice dark arts, but there are some that's more subtle in nature. There are some that's more subtle in nature. They will practice a uh, uh, white magic. So not only uh, they will they do black magic, but they will practice white magic. And, and they'll begin to use the elements to help them in their spell. Oh God, uh, they will help them in the casting spells or concoctions against you to help you. So watch this. Watch this. I'm going to help you tonight. I'm going to help somebody tonight. Give me one moment. I want to help somebody tonight. And so, uh, what you find uh, to be uh, 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 that you think that the Holy Spirit is helping you, now some of them are using white magic. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? Uh, they will use white magic. White magic is a little bit a diff differentiates slightly from dark uh, uh, magic. Dark magic or black magic, rather, is, is just blatant to inflict harm on you. But with white magic, they use elements to help them in their spells and the, in their concoction. Uh, uh, they will perform what we call uh, false healing. And so now when you're in this particular place and you believe that you received healing from the Lord, it wasn't necessarily healing from the Lord. It was white magic that was done. And so here you are, you're, you're excited, you're excited and you feel, wow, I received healing, but watch this, you may get better, but only for a period of time. Those who practice white magic or are operating in the false prophetic ministry, uh, you'll find that uh, uh, with this, this healing, it will not last long. And so it will last for a period of, of while, but after you will begin to get sick and it, it will, you will get sick even the more after that spell have it lifted again you want to be mindful that all prophetic ministries uh, that you believe is a prophetic ministry or have a name that's called prophetic ministry is a prophetic ministry now listen i don't want you to think that i'm talking about every church uh, i am not talking about every church i'm not saying for you to be paranoid uh so Remember, uh, God's church is always going to stand. Let me give you some healthy balance right here before I proceed. God's church will always stand. God's kingdom will always stand. 
we are not defeated neither is God's kingdom defeated right uh, and all ministry is not a bad ministry so I don't want you to leave with the perception that we're badgering the church listen we're exposing the kingdom of darkness so that the church now can go to another level it's imperative that the church learn these teaching this church the church today need to learn the teaching on the uh, false prophetic ministries exposing satanic uh, operations and witchcraft so that we're not easily deceived okay we, we need to learn about occultic practices and different things of this nature so that way we do not fall susceptible and pray uh, to what we believe is right I want to help you tonight I want to solidify that just in case someone thinks that we're badgering the church, uh, we have to apply wisdom. So I want you to understand that. Now there are some that will practice white magic. As I said, there will be false healing. There will be false blessing. There will be false blessing. Right? They will uh, 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 do false blessings. So now when you believe that you have been blessed, uh, 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 they receive a declaration of being blessed. And you may even see some manifestations in your life. Uh, again, as I said, these so-called blessings, they have a time limit on them. It'll be but for a while. But before you know you know it, your, your life will begin to uh, uh, fall apart even the more. Because you now have open gateways and portals for the false ministry, for falsehood to come in. And whenever you receive a false prophetic word, or a false prophetic declaration it open portals is open gateways now you find that your life has become more susceptible to a, 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 a demonic gateways where the enemy can now have his way in your life he can begin to have his way in your life right and so that's why uh, you will see that you'll find that your ministry or your life will begin to slowly fall apart Things will fall, slowly fall apart because you have opened up your spirit to a false prophetic word or you've opened up your spirit what you believe to be a false prophetic word not knowing that you are really a, a, a victim of black magic or white magic or even gray magic. Now gray magic uh, we often don't hear about but gray magic is black ma uh, 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 gray magic is where white magic meets black magic i want to help somebody tonight it's where white magic meets black magic so that which was intended to <clears throat> so-called help you now turns into black magic and now it's called gray magic so all of these things are being used and so watch this watch this a false prophet a false prophet will not only use black magic white magic or gray magic but they operate also in the spirit of divination they operate in the spirit of divination this is the practice of seeking knowledge of the, uh, of the future or the unknown by supernatural means by supernatural means and so they will do this being sourced from the demonic kingdom once again <clears throat> I'm gonna re enlighten you. I taught this before, but I'm gonna say it again for those who missed it. Uh, you would find that they will consult uh, uh, the familiar spirit or spirit guides. So, what you believe to be the prophetic is actual spirit guides that, uh, uh, that they're being governed by, that's speaking to them and through them to speak through you. You'll also find uh, the, uh, the spirit of Python, but I'm gonna get to that very shortly. I'm going to get to that very shortly. And so you'll find the spirit of divination. They get their powers from spirit guides. They get their powers also, as I said to you before, uh, 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 through, through the powers of witchcraft. They, they go and they consult priests. They consult different kinds of priests. Okay? Uh, let me say this. Please, if I am on Facebook Live... Please be mindful that you do not interrupt the broadcasting by sending messages, please. So they will get their, uh, their powers from, from other witches or spirit guides. Or they will go and seek shamans. Amen. And they will go and get their powers uh, through the in these different incantations. 
And now again, they're hearing, but they're not hearing from the Spirit of God. And most of the times, that which they're telling you uh, will seem to be accurate. But if you will listen carefully, and only if you will listen with your spirit, you will know that it's not the Holy Spirit speaking. You will know that it's not the Holy Spirit speaking. And so they, 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 they tap into uh, your future and they tap into your past. And they have the ability to tell you what you've experienced in your childhood. And they can go further back into generations. Not only can they do that, but they also can tell you about your future. And they can tell you what's going to happen or what's happening in your life presently and they may be very very uh, seem to be very accurate in what they're saying and what they're saying but again it's not the Holy Spirit speaking and the Bible says test every spirit but I'm gonna go into that that's right we've seen this uh, with Saul and the witch of Endor also okay uh, but these are different kinds of of divination and I'm gonna get into that in a minute so the practice of divination as I said is, is seeking knowledge from the supernatural realm but not necessarily from the Holy Spirit right uh, they practice soothsaying they practice soothsaying uh, they practice witchcraft as the man of God mentioned uh, the witch of Endor this is where they practice necromancy we see necromancy even there uh, where they're getting their information from those who are uh, uh, that has already passed on now they're getting information from spirits uh, uh, from those people who they believe to already passed on this is a practice of necromancy necromancy so sometimes you will even hear some people say well I spoke to your deceased a grandmother or I saw your deceased grandmother or grandfather or person in uh, in a dream and in the dream they told me to tell you X Y and Z listen those are false prophetic words I'm gonna say it again those are false prophetic words it does not mean that it's from the Spirit of God and so even with dreams you have to be careful in whom interpret your dreams we even saw this in the book of Daniel the king was looking for someone to interpret his dreams and he even called on the the, the sorcerers and and the so-called fortune tellers and, and they and they can have the ability to tell you about your dreams but as again I said, it's only through the Holy Spirit you can know what's authentic and what's not. So listen, you don't want people to say, I saw so-and-so in your dreams and in my dreams and they told me to tell you and now you're receiving this word. You're receiving this word because you believe that there's a connection there. Uh, discard the word, renounce it because the moment you receive that word is the moment now you open up yourself for demonic activity. You open yourself up for demonic activity. Now I want to teach. Uh, and I want to teach tonight a little bit balanced because there are some people who are not privy to this teaching. So I don't want to get too deep and revelatory where some people miss it uh, uh, and uh, and they don't get the revelation of what's being taught. So I want to kind of keep it balanced uh, tonight. Amen. And so you'll find that. Uh, some people would say, oh, they saw this person in their dream. Uh, not only that, uh, you will hear people say, uh, well, the Lord said to tell you X, Y, and Z. And, and they're, they're giving you a word, but really their spirit guide speaking to them. Spirit guide speaking to them. Familiar spirit, right? Um, so I said they, they operate through witchcraft, sorcery. Uh, they operate through uh, 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 forbidden dark art, right? They prophesy from a different source. And these are things that they will exhibit. They will exhibit pride. You will know that they are a false prophet because it's not about them. It's, it's not about, it's not about um, the Holy Spirit. As I said last week, they're not pointing people to the Holy Spirit. They're pointing it to themselves. It's to get self-glorification. They exhibit pride. They exhibit arrogance. And they also live immoral, immoral lives. Now listen, this teaching is not a teaching that's very popular. As I said, oftentimes they're not very popular. And you may not find a very large audience or viewing when it comes to these kind of teaching. And, and let me tell you something. 
Oftentimes, you'll even find that your audience will even drop the moment they hear the truth because people do not want to hear the truth. Not everyone, but oftentimes the majority does not want to hear the truth. And there are some people that are even so prideful that they will say, Oh, I already know this already. I already know this already, so I don't need to learn this. This is the mistake that we make. This is the mistake that we make is that we feel that, again, that we have already attained and we've already apprehended. We're to be humble and listen to what God is saying. To what God is saying. Oh God, thank you for bringing that up because I'm going to be talking about that in a moment. So listen, because when you are preaching truth, don't feel that you I already know this. You know, this is basic, right? Uh, this is basic. Already know. Listen, sometimes the Holy Spirit come to remind us. This is what I'm saying tonight. I'm just barely teaching. I'm teaching balance because I don't want to be too deep and revelatory where those who are babes in Christ miss it. They can't understand. And I don't want to, to do too much. Where now if it feeds on those who feel like they know it all. We have to listen to what God is saying. Because guess what? There are some people that are going to go into the new year with the same issues. You know why? Because somebody done told you a so-called prophetic word. I'm telling somebody tonight. You're going to go into the new year with a false prophetic word. And now you're going to be sitting there in 2018 waiting on the manifestation to happen. And you're going to run into disappointment because somebody lied to you. Huh? Somebody done lied to you. Somebody told you God said when he did not say. I'm, I'm, I'm going to help somebody out tonight. And guess what? We're going to enter the new year. You want to make sure that before you go into the new year, you renounce and denounce all those false prophetic words that you received. Because if you go into the new year with those false prophetic words and the false prophecy and the false Holy Spirit, guess what? They're not going to tell you that you're going to go into the new year with the same old problems, with the same old demons you were struggling with five years ago because somebody done lied to you. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. They're not going to tell you that. They're not going to tell you that. They spoke to you through some familiar spirit. So now here you are. Oh, God said he's going to bless me with a car. And God's going to bless me with a house. And God says in this year, my business is going to open. And I'm going to get married. Or in this year, I'm going to be on this. And I'm going to be doing that. And now here you are. You're waiting on that so-called word. And it never comes. And then now you look to God and say, God, well, you said this and you said that. Listen, God is not at fault. I'm going to say that again. Because a lot of you tend to turn your backs on God uh, turn your backs on God or backslide and say God well you can't be real because you said this and you said that God says I did not say it I'm gonna help you out tonight right and, and so now you're blaming God for something that you have allowed yourself to hear when in, in actuality you heard from the wrong source so you're going into the new year expecting all these things to happen and it never comes. And, and guess what? Now your life is going down. I'm not, I'm not speaking negatively against anyone, but I'm speaking reality. I'm not speaking negatively. I'm speaking reality. This is what happens to a lot of people. Then we blame God for it. We blame God or you prophesied and, and, and then instead of looking at that person and begin to examine their life, you, you still hold them on, 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 a, on a pedestal and then you blame God for it. Instead of saying, wait a minute, did, did, this, did God really say that? Let me go in my Bible and begin to assess it. Let me begin to, to, to dissect this word to know whether of a certainty God said it. And I've seen this happen with people. And listen, if you have spoken a, a false prophetic word to someone in their life and it did not come to pass, apologize for it. That's the least you can do. Apologize for it. If you, if you say you're a prophet and maybe you were just a little bit somewhat off and, and it did not come to pass, apologize for it and repent. Because there are a lot of people who are holding on to misconceptions. I'm going to say that again. A lot of people are holding on to misconceptions. To God be the glory. My audience just went from 40 all the way to 30. But that's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm helping somebody tonight. And those who have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. 
right? And so watch this, watch this. You, you'll find that they begin to exhibit certain things. Now, let me, let me give you the test of a true prophet. Because in order to know the false, you have to know what's true. Right? You have to know what's true. The test of a true prophet. They must speak in the name of the Lord. They must speak in the name of the Lord. Listen, if they do not mention Jesus Christ, then you know, oftentimes, they may be a false prophetic voice, a false apostolic teacher, or a false teacher. And again, even for many of you who are or who are listening to many people in their messages, do you find that they won't necessarily mention Jesus Christ, but you will hear them say God or Yah? Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to say God, but you want to be very careful. If they have never mentioned Jesus Christ and Him crucified, you want to examine that. Some of these things you are watching, some of these people you are listening to, if they've never uttered the name Jesus Christ out of their mouth, and they're constantly saying, oh God, or the Spirit, or the Supreme One, or the, the High One, or the Most High, and they're never mentioning Jesus Christ, then you know of a certainty that this is potentially a false teacher. This is a potentially a false teacher. Because the last time I checked, it is only through the name Jesus Christ, or some people may want to call him Yeshua, however you want to call him, right? Yeshua or Jesus Christ. Listen, listen, if they do not mention that name, because the last time I checked, it's that name that brought deliverance. It's that name that brought our salvation. It's that name where demons tremble. It's that name that we have received salvation. It's that name, hallelujah, that that's able to break every chain and bands asunder. It's that name that has the power to destroy witchcraft. It's the name of Jesus Christ. And if they are not proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ, then you want to begin to examine their fruit. The Bible says it's by their fruit you shall know them. And so they preach the complete opposite from what a, a true prophet will say. Number two, a sign of a false prophet is that what he or she say uh, uh, doesn't come to pass. If you are a true prophet, the word of God must come to pass. God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. God is not slack concerning his promises. And so if a word goes forth, it must be valid, it must be true, it must be accurate. There's no lies or deceit in uh, a true prophetic word. I hope I'm helping somebody tonight. I hope I'm helping somebody. It must come to pass. So if they gave you, if someone given you a prophetic word, listen, and it did not come to pass, these are a few things that you need to examine. Number one, that may be a false prophet or a false teacher. Number two, they spoke out of their own out of the, the solical realm. They spoke out of their own emotion. Maybe they had wishful thinking concerning you. Maybe they had a, a, a positive mindset concerning you and they believe, uh, were trying to believe for you. So because of, of they spoke out of their own spirit, they began to say, God says, but it wasn't a true prophetic word. So I would oftentimes tell people, if you're going to say something and you are not sure that God is speaking or you're not sure what God is saying concerning that situation, then you do a prophetic decree or a prophetic declaration. When there's a prophetic decree, then you are speaking and you're decreeing by believing that it will happen. But when you say, thus saith the Spirit of the Lord God, and it does not happen, then you are a liar. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm ashamed of the devil tonight. You're a liar if you say, thus saith the Spirit of the Lord God, and it does not come to pass. It is better that you make a decree and say, I am believing God. I am believing God for, for this X, Y, and Z miracle. It's better that you say that. It's better that you say, uh, um, it's better that you say, well, I, I, I'm going to pray for you. And listen, listen, listen. If in actuality, if somebody is pulling on your spirit for a prophetic word and you do not have a word, 
do not lie to them. Do not lie to the people of God. Don't lie and say you have a word and you don't have a word. It makes you a liar. It makes you a, 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 a false prophet by saying you have a word and you don't have. Listen, if people come to you on a, 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 on a line and, and they come up to you and say, oh, well, what's the word? Well, what's the word, prophet? What's the word for this season? What is God saying in this hour? Listen, you are not a psychic. You are not a psychic. If you do not have a word, stop making up words. It is better you say to them, I don't have a word, but I can pray. Stop trying to make stuff up. I'll pray for you, but I don't necessarily have a word for you or concerning you. Don't say, oh, I heard God said, just so that you can have some form of credibility. It's okay to be a prophet and say, you know what? I don't have a word for you, but I can pray for you. Don't lie to the people of God because you are damaging them. You're damaging souls. You're damaging the kingdom. And God is bringing exposure in this hour to those who say that they're speaking in the name of the Lord, but in actuality they're not. You're living immoral lives. I'm gonna. Oh my God! I'm gonna help somebody tonight. If you are living in an immoral life, you cannot say you're representing God. I'm gonna help you tonight. I don't care how gifted you are. God may have called you a prophet, but it is possible to be called a prophet and then begin to fall into being a false prophet. It happens. Saul was anointed by God. But guess what? At the end, he consulted the witch of Endor. It is possible to start the race out well and finish in a disaster. I'm talking to somebody tonight. And so I need you to understand that don't say that God says, and he did not say, don't say that you are a prophet of God and you're living an immoral life. You're living your life in sin. You're not living in righteousness. You're not living in holiness. You're not in a pra- you're not living a prayerful life. Amen. You're living in homosexuality. Uh-oh. I'm going to help somebody tonight. Do not call yourself a prophet if you are a homosexual. I don't care if you when called a prophet, but don't don't misrepresent God and misrepresent the kingdom of God. Immorality and the works of the flesh and the spirit cannot come together. The Bible says, "What does light have to do with darkness?" Huh? The spirit of uh, the spirit of God is not subjected to the, the law of the flesh. Neither indeed can it be. There are two different kingdoms. Stop trying to combine the two. I hope I'm helping somebody tonight. Because I hear I see a lot of, 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 of homosexual so-called false prophets out here. And they, I got a word. I got a word. Listen. Go sit yourself down and teach yourself a word. Because now you're spewing all that uh, all that, that, that toxicity to people. You're transferring spirits to people. You cannot say you are authentic prophet and you're misrepresenting God's kingdom. Hello, somebody. I hope I'm helping you tonight. If I'm helping you tonight, please give me some thumbs up and some hearts. I hope you're sharing this video. I know people are not going to like this. But listen, you cannot have and, and, and endorse all of these immoral behavior in the house of God and calling it God. And calling it the spirit of prophecy The devil is a liar Because the truth be told uh, These demonic spirits And these false prophets and false teachers Have have now populated What we believe to call the church I'm talking about it We populated it Now it's okay uh, for for, for homosexuals To so called say they're prophesying Uh, People think it's okay For them to be on the choir I don't even know why I'm going this direction People think that it's okay to, to be pray, prophetic praise and worship leaders or prophetic musicians. Uh, how can that be? I hope I'm helping you tonight. You can't call yourself a true prophet if you're living in immorality. I'm not saying we won't fall short of the glory of God, but that's not where you live. You are a representation of God's kingdom.
We need to get our house in order. Because you know what? You know I'm going so hard with this? Because those now, those people who have become a victim of false prophets, now they have been so scarred that they don't know the difference between a true prophet and a real prophet. And guess what? You know what they do? They begin to lump everybody in one. Now, I'm not saying it's your fault, but they lump everybody in one in generalization because they don't know who to believe anymore. People don't know what to believe anymore. And that's why we need to use discernment. But it's sad that those who are authentic now have to suffer the blood for those who are false prophets. And guess what? Watch this. Watch this. Some of you need to stop supporting them. Cut it off. Listen, I need you to type that into your text box. Cut it off. Stop supporting these false prophets. I don't care if they are on an international platform. If they are a false prophet, cut it off. Thank you, thank you for that woman of God, uh, S.C. Harris. Cut it off. I don't care what kind of books they got in Barnes and Noble. If they're not speaking the word of the Lord, cut it off. If they are, are, are not a true prophet, stop supporting some of these people. Stop giving them your money. Stop supporting most of these people. Cut them off. And get and support those who are authentic. But you need to, listen, you've got to use discernment in this hour. It is imperative because guess what? The Bible says in the last day, there shall be false prophets. And many people are going to be deceived. You need to learn to cut them off. I know I'm helping somebody tonight. That's right. That's right. And you know what? They'll flock to them. I, I, I even mentioned this last week. There was a particular person, and I won't call them any names, but there's a particular person that, that was using lewd words and, 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 and vile, vile language in their Facebook live broadcasting. And you call yourself a prophet. How is that possible? How is it possible? And guess what? This person got 500, 600, 700 people. And I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. A lot of people do not tend to follow that which is authentic. And I'm going to use the scripture again. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there's going to be many that, that find themselves therein. But narrow is the way that leads to salvation. So listen, listen. Uh, you are in good company if you are not in a place where all the popularity is. You want to watch them. Begin to assess these things. Right? Watch this. Number three. Number three. I've got so much to share. Uh, uh, they will perform signs, wonders, and miracles to accompany the prophetic word. True prophets. True prophets will perform signs, wonders, miracles to accompany the prophetic word that has gone forth. False prophets, watch this, will also perform miracles and, and signs and wonders. But what are the scripture says? What are the scripture says? In Matthew chapter 24, verses 4, 24, it says it like this. For false, for false messiahs and false prophets, hallelujah, will appear. They will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive. If possible, even the very elect. These are scriptures that we don't hear preached on the pulpit very often anymore. The, what we hear now, oh, there's going to be a, a shift in. It's going to, it's a new paradigm. And God is going to catapult you and all these nice little words. But what about where it says in Matthew chapter 24, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and they will perform great miracle signs and wonders to deceive you. Hallelujah. Even the very elect, even people who know God, even the very elect. Listen, their spirits are going to be so seducing, so appealing, so attractive that you won't even know the difference and they will perform miracle signs and wonders so here you are you're gonna see all these miracle signs and wonders that's following them right but in actuality then in actuality again uh, this is not from the Spirit of God and there's going to be many Many that's going to fall susceptible to this. In this day and age that we're living in, it is imperative. It is critical. It is, it is uh, an immediate, this requires your immediate attention. So that you begin to uh, train your ear to hear the voice of God for yourself. 
Know the voice of God for yourself. Discern the voice of God for yourself. Know God for yourself. Listen, please type that in the text box. Know God for yourself. I don't want to depend on somebody else to tell me who God is. I don't want to say, oh, prophet, well, what's the next word? You need to know God for yourself. Get on your knees and hear God for yourself. A false prophet is not going to tell you, oh, go get on your knees and hear, uh, uh, hear God for yourself. They want you to have dependence upon them. Huh? They want you to depend on them so that you can keep it coming back. That's how they gain from you. They gain from you by you having a dependence on them. They want you to constantly come to them for deliverance. Oh my God. My God. They want you to constantly come to them for a word. They want you to constantly come to them uh, 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 for, for your decision making. False prophets. They, they'll make you feel like you are uh, incapable of knowing God for yourself. I'm telling you tonight. Please, I beseech you. I implore you. Get on your knees. If there was ever a time, the time is now to get on your knees and hear God for yourself. Begin to tune into the frequency of heaven and say, God, what are you saying concerning me? I, I don't want to keep going on a prayer line. I don't want to keep going on the next conference line. I don't want to keep going on, on uh, to, to my pastor to hear a word for myself. God, what are you, what are you saying to me? Because I'm telling you, if you're constantly running to people, you're going to constantly be getting deceived. They're going to fill you up with all these false prophetic words, and now you're not going to know what to believe. Uh, they're going to leave you in a state of spiritual schizophrenia. My God, my God, my God. They're going to leave you in a state of spiritual schizophrenia because now you're hearing all these different kinds of voices. A spiritual bipolar spirit. You're hearing all these different voices. Yes, that's right, man of God. Yes, that's right, woman of God. Preach, man of God. Preach and from conference to conference, from church to church, from Facebook Live to Facebook Live. You jump on this one, next one, you jump on the next one. Now you're hearing different stuff. Have you stopped to ask the Holy Spirit, what is it that's worthy of listening to? Listen, your life is not your own. God, what, what's worthy of listening to? Is this making sense? Does this line up with the word of God? Listen, if I am saying something that does not line with the word of God, cut me off. I am not exempt. If I should ever say anything or do anything that does not line up with the word of God, cut me off. I am not exempt. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. So, the Bible says they're going to deceive the very elect. They're going to deceive the very elect. Watch this. Now, therefore, uh, the scripture says, watch this, here's another example. Now, therefore, send and gather all Israel to me on Mount Carmel, the 450 prophets of Baal, oh God, and the 400 prophets of Asherah, who ate at Jezebel's table. I'm going to say that again. Now, therefore, send and gather all of Israel to me on Mount Carmel, the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah, who eat at Jezebel's table. Listen, you have true prophets prophets of God and you have prophets of Baal that eats at Jezebel's table and I'm sure that they all were performing miracle signs and wonders I'm sure many of them so-called were pro uh, so-called say they were prophesying some things they are listen did you hear this on the Mount Carmel there was prophet Elijah prophet Elijah and guess how many false prophets there were 450 false prophets that were on the Mount of Carmel which means that there are plenty of them out there. there there's a plethora of them out there they're out there in the numbers right and they are they will perform certain things but they're re they're not representing the government of God they're not representing the kingdom of God please if I'm helping you tonight please give me some thumbs up with some hearts and it helps to let me know that you're receiving this and so there's all throughout the Bible, they had different kinds of false prophets. Uh, 
You had boy Jesus, boy Jesus, amen, who was threatened by the ministry of Paul. Boy Jesus, amen, did not want Paul to preach the doctrine in which he was preaching because he knew that if Paul came, then Paul will take him out of business. So guess what? A lot of false prophets will contend against true prophetic voices because if if, if they are uh, allow a true prophetic voice to go forth, then it takes them out of commission. It takes them out of business. And so guess what? Bar Jesus was trying everything in his power uh, to misrepresent Paul so that people would not believe Paul. Prophets, maybe you have gone through that. Uh, 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 maybe there are some people who are out there who had lied on you and they accused you and they told people that you are a false prophet and, and they didn't want people to listen to you because they knew if people would listen to you, hallelujah, they knew that uh, 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 that it would put them out of commission, it would put them out of business, that they no longer can deceive you, they will no longer manipulate you, they will no longer have the ability to lie to you so they will lie on you just so that you will not look credible, oh my god, I I hope I'm helping somebody tonight. They will lie on you. They will sabotage your character. They, hallelujah, because they're threatened by a true prophetic voice. They will sabotage your character just so other people will not find you to be credible. So that when now you are speaking a true prophetic word, people will not say, well, I heard uh, X, Y, and Z about this person. And so don't believe them. That they, that that person is a Jezebel or that person is a false prophet or that person is a liar. They will lie on you just so that people won't believe you. They did this with Jesus. They will even persecute you so that people will follow you. They will lie on you. You will go through uh, being ostracized, criticized. They will lie on you. Accusations will come. A persecution will come. The threat will come. And they will lie to you and to people in high places just so that your prophetic voice will be silenced. Listen, a true a false prophet will do everything in their power to silence a true prophetic voice. They will try to silence you. If they can throw you in a pit they, like they did with Joseph, they will throw you in a pit. If they will try to pursue your life like how Saul did with David, they will try to pursue you with arrows. And Saul uh, pursued David with arrows and javelin. Hallelujah. Just to kill that prophetic uh, uh, vessel. Uh, they did it with Jesus, they did it with Joseph, they would do it just to silence you they're threatened by your ministry, I know that this is happening to many prophets right, so you, you see why Jesus uh, uh, did that even with Paul then watch this, watch this you have false prophets like Balaam my God, my God, you got false prophets like Balaam Praise the Lord. You got false. I, I see your apostle Moses. God bless you. God bless you. Then you got false prophets like Balaam. Hallelujah. Do you know that there are some people that is hired against your life? Hallelujah. Hired to, to prophesy some things against you. Uh, they've been hired, my God. Hallelujah. To, to, to release some evil concoctions against your life. They've been hired to speak destruction against your life. They've been hired, hallelujah, against your life to, to make sure your ministry will never amount to anything. They've been hired to cast spells against you. Uh, they've been hired to release hexes, vexes, incantations, and spells against you just so that you would not prosper. But I want you to understand tonight, prophets, that every uh, prophet of Balaam that have been hired against your life, uh, it will not work. You see, that's what a false prophet is. A false prophet will do things for hire. If you pay them, then they will do something for you. My God, my God. And hallelujah, if you pay, that's what I'm talking about, the dark arts. I'm talking about the witchcraft that they dabble in. The dark arts, where they, they'll begin to, 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 to tamper with these things. They will start their divination and their sorcery. The dark arts that they will begin to do 
and I'll begin to release incantations against your life. Hallelujah. I've even talked about evil altars and false prophets will even do things on evil altars so that they can prophesy things concerning your destiny so that you will not move forward. They do this against true prophets of the Lord. The Bible talks about the 450 prophets of Baal. They built an altar. My God, my God. Do you know that false prophets build altars, amen, against you? Just because somebody hired them, they will build a false altar against you to see uh, the destructions come upon you. Hallelujah. But the Bible says that destruction will not come upon you unaware. Hallelujah. The Bible says that God will be a shelter for you because you are hitting in his secret pavilion. You are hitting under his wings. You are hitting in his tabernacle. Hallelujah. So there is no false prophets or bay or hired against you. They won't prosper in what they're doing. They won't prosper in their work. Whatever it is, they're releasing. Hallelujah. And been hired for just to destroy you. They're going to see nothing but blessings. But that's what a false prophet will do. I'm talking about the false prophets of Balaam. Watch this. I'm going to go somewhere tonight. I'm going to bless your hearts tonight. I'm going to bless your sweet souls tonight. I hope you're sharing these videos. Listen, a, prof, a false prophet will do things for hire. Watch this. They will tell you to pay them for a prophecy. You're not to ever pay for a prophecy. I'm going to tell you the difference. Because I see a lot of people get this confused. I'm going to help you tonight the difference between uh, paying for a prophecy and sincerely sowing into uh, an authentic prophet. Because a lot of people, when they hear this, they, 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 they get this confused. I'm going to help you tonight. I'm just going gonna, gonna to take a little bit of a turn here. A false prophet will tell you to pay for a prophetic word. Listen, the devil is a liar. You do not pay for a prophetic word. God never said for anyone to pay for a prophetic word. So if, if, if I release this word, then you need to pay me. You need to give to me. Listen, the Bible says silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee. Right, you're never to pay for a prophetic word. You don't have to stand on a thousand dollar line to pay for a prophetic word. Now, if you choose to stand on there and to sow, then absolutely you may feel free to do so. But you are never to be under force or coercion or compulsory to give for a prophetic word or to give for a prayer or to give for a prophecy or for someone to interpret your dreams. The devil is a liar. You do not pay for that. Now let me give you the difference. Listen. There's a difference. The, the Bible talks about the woman uh, uh, that gave her last. Right? The woman who gave her last. Now there are some sincere, authentic prophets that God is going to, that God will say to you, uh, uh, I want you to examine this ministry. And, and if this ministry is a blessing, then you, uh, uh, then by free will, Here's the difference. By free will, then you may sow into that by the leading. But hear the words of my mouth. I'm going to help somebody tonight. By the leading of the Holy Spirit. If God is leading you, and, and then there is a great impartation, then God will say, okay, well, I am leading you to sow into this ministry. There's nothing wrong with sowing into a true prophetic voice. But you're not paying for it. You, It's done by free will. There's no control, no force, or coercion. I'm helping somebody tonight. Because, uh, watch this, I see a lot of people that, that are, uh, people now are afraid. They're afraid because they don't know who's who anymore. So anyone who they see that, that says, okay, well, if, if, if you want to be a blessing uh, to this ministry, then all of a sudden, oh, that's a false prophet because they ask for money. No, listen, everybody is not a false prophet if, they, if people decide that they're going to give into that ministry. Let, let me say that. Let me say that. You know why? I'm going to debunk this philosophy. I'm going to, because the Holy Spirit has been dealing with me about this. He's really been dealing with me about this. And I don't want to lose my audience. I want you to hear this. The church has been so spiritually abused that people don't know 
the difference between a false prophet or a true prophet. They've been so abused to the point now, they have held their hands like this. They have held themselves like this. So now, now when God is saying, if you are, are, are want you to be a blessing to this authentic ministry, I'm not saying mine, I'm not saying mine. But if he say, I want you to be a, a blessing to your church or a blessing to this organization or a blessing to give to the cancer society, right? Whether it's a cancer society or to the homeless man, you do like this with your hand. And now you don't see any reciprocity in your life because you've been so scarred by those who are false. Because you, we've made the mistake in investing in the wrong people. So now we think everybody, everybody's demonized because we've done the wrong, we, we invested in the wrong people. I, I'm going to help somebody tonight. And so guess what? Guess what? Now those who are sincere and authentic, who, who really should be, uh, be helping to build as they did in the book of, of, of Nehemiah, who should be helping to build. I knew I wasn't going to get no hearts, but that's all right. That's all right. I know I'm not going to get any hearts, but I'm going to teach you tonight because again, you've been taught false doctrine. You've been taught philosophies of men that have messed you up in the head. Now listen, people believe that uh, we as Christians, because uh, uh, they feel like a lot of people say, I knew I was going to lose my audience. That's all right. Some people say, well, guess what? I'm not going to give into the church. I'm not going to give it to the church because all they do is talk about money. I've heard people say that. All they do is talk about money. But guess what? You will be quick to endorse the world. You will be quick to endorse the world. You're quick to give your money to McDonald's. You're quick to give your money to um uh, 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 to buying a car. You're quick to give your money on shopping. You're quick to give to the world. But when it comes to the kingdom of God, where you can also reap kingdom blessing, you don't do it because you believe that everybody in the church now is a spiritual prostitute. I'm going to help you tonight. I know I'm going to lose my audience, but that's all right. I'm going to teach you. Because guess what? Guess what? When somebody in your family passes away, the first place you come is to a church. You don't go to the world. I'm going to help you tonight. I'm talking about the corrupted mindset. I'm talking about the difference between prophets of Balaam and true prophets. Watch this. So now the true ministries suffer. But the moment, the moment somebody in your family passes away, the first place you go to bury your family member is in the church. But you don't want to give to that church. You don't want to give to your pastor. You don't want to support the kingdom. Because guess what? In your mind, everybody in the church is false because all they do is ask for money. Well, that's the case. Then let the world bury. Let the world bury your family members. I'm gonna keep it real tonight. I'm not. Listen, a lot of people don't like me, and that's all right. I'm God's friend. Let the world bury your family members. That that's the case. How do you expect the church doors to stay open if you don't? If you don't give, you come. You run to the church when somebody dies in your family. You run to the church when you want a baptism done. But it, oh, but guess what? Everybody in the church, they're false, and all they do is ask for money, and all they do is uh, 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 all they do is trying to pimp people, and all they do is trying to prostitute people. But when you need to, your your, uh, uh, your child to get christened, you come to the church. When you want baptism, you come to the church. Somebody dies, you come to the church, right? Right? I don't help somebody tonight. When you want to get married, you come to the church, but you don't want to support the kingdom. And you, we have uh, taught people in the kingdom to have a poverty mindset. I don't know why I'm going this way. We've been taught to think that people in the kingdom are not supposed to be wealthy. People in the kingdom are not supposed to be uh, 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 authoritative in different aspects of life. That's how we know that we are true, truly God's representative. We are supposed to have authority and dominion in every aspect. Not just the worldly man, not just Oprah, not just Tyler Perry. Uh, listen, I'm calling the names out tonight, that's alright. Not just all of these uh, Bill Gates and, and Donald Trump. How can, why is it that the, it's okay for the world to have it, but not the church? And we're quick to indict the church. Hello, somebody. Listen, God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to have more than enough. That's his promises. The promises was not for the world.
world. The promises was for the church. The promises is for his sons of God. He wants you to be wealthy. He doesn't want you to live from paycheck to paycheck. How can you say you call yourself a, 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 a prophet, but you're living from paycheck to paycheck? I'm talking about a different dispensation. Now, I'm not saying everybody's going to be rich, but you have to be balanced. Be balanced. I'm helping somebody tonight. The devil is a liar. I know you don't want to be going from paycheck to paycheck. Nobody should be going from paycheck to paycheck. A prophet of Balaam will do it for hire. I'm going to help you tonight. A prophet of Balaam will do it for hire. A true prophet will do it because they love God. And they want to see you saved. And they want to see you delivered. And they want to see you set free. The moment you want deliverance, the first place you come is to a church. And But yet you don't feel like that prophet or your pastor or your church is worthy enough to, to, to receive a blessing from you whether it be your time it doesn't always have to be money can you give of your time can can that pastor or leader depend on you for your time can it depend on you because we've gotten this mindset that everything is gimme 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 God don't want us broke busted and disgusted those inheritance was for us not for the worldly men not for worldly, not for the world. It was for us. Listen, I'm, I'm going to get off of that. I hope I'm helping you tonight. Because guess what? A true prophet is effective in every aspect. They are effective in the marketplace. They are effective in the government. They are effective in the school system. They are effective in church. They are effective in the law enforcement. They are are effective in every aspect there is we're not supposed to be walking with our head down we are the one with the true dominion i'm just teaching you the difference between balaam and a true prophet please please stop categorizing prophets of balaam with true prophets everyone is not a false prophet use your discernment i'm gonna move on from there right and the Bible also talks about another false prophet uh, uh, who was called, it says, uh, Zedekiah and the 400 prophets, right? Who assured Ahab and Jehoshaphat, watch this, and Jehoshaphat that God will give Israel the victory over Syria. I'm going to read that again. I'm going to read that again. I hope I'm helping you tonight. It says, watch this. Here's another sign of a false prophet. It was a, a man named Zedekiah. And the, and the 400 prophets who assured Ahab and Jehoshaphat that God will give Israel the victory. My God, I hope you're hearing this tonight. Over Syria, over armies led by ben -Habad. In 1 Kings chapter 22 verses 5. Right? Watch this, watch this. These false prophets, Zedekiah. He said to the children, he said to Ahab, well, guess what? Uh, you're you're going to get the victory. You're going to get the, the victory over Syria's army. And you're going to get the victory. And, 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 and that's led by the army of the Ben-Hadad. Uh, you're going to get the victory. And watch this. It was not so. It was not so. Zedekiah and his 400 prophets were saying this. How many prophets out there that's like Zedekiah that's telling you, oh, you're going to get the victory. This is your year of victory and this is your time of release and this is your time of breakthrough for some people that may be so. But listen, listen, a false prophet will tell you victory. Hallelujah. They will tell you that you'll get victory knowing that your life is in a mess. That's a false prophet. If you are living a sinful life and your life is in mess, how can you preach victory for someone's life whose life who is not in alignment to the things of God? They will tell you that you're going to get the victory and you're going to get a breakthrough and God is going to bless you. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the Zedekiah, so-called Zedekiah prophet. They will tell you falsehood. And tell you that you're gonna overcome, and, and, and you're gonna you're gonna overcome, and you're gonna make it. But in actuality, that's not what God is saying. God is saying, get your house in order, then you'll get the victory. 
Get your house in order. You'll get the victory. When you are in alignment to the things of God, you'll get the victory. If you are led by the Holy Ghost, then you'll get the victory. That's what a real prophet will tell you. Right? So, watch this. I, I'm, I'm coming to a close. I'm coming to a close. I'm going to help you all tonight. Let me know that you're still with me. Listen, guys, please. I want you to please share these videos. Share the videos because the videos is what's helping people. It's what's helping people. Okay? It's blessing people. I, I've, I've heard a lot of people come and give me positive feedback. Saying, woman of God, your videos has helped me uh, to get deliverance. It has helped me to break free from some things. It has helped me. You are, are in partnership with me by sharing the videos. Amen. So, um, I'm going to uh, give you some, an example of how prophets work with the spirit of python i'm gonna touch on this briefly tonight i'm gonna tell you how false prophets work with the spirit of python and if i have enough time next week i'm gonna give you the characteristics of a false prophet characteristics of a false prophet i'm gonna finish the year with that but now let me give you some some um information on a python spirit that works with false prophecy python spirit you can find this in the book of acts chapter 16 verses 16 the bible says it like this the bible says it like this and it came to pass in our going to our prayer that a certain maid having the spirit of divination the spirit of divination or the spirit of python did meet us who brought us much employment to, to who brought much employment to her masters by soothsaying practice divination and a false this is a false prophetic a false prophetic right so a lot of people don't know that the python spirit is married to false prophets python spirit put that i want you to type that into your text box a python spirit is married to false prophets they work together and i said it, it says it brings them much gain they did this for employment like what a psychic would do it brought them much gain right and she have followed paul and and, and followed paul watch this like the bible says that this particular uh um this particular uh woman with the the maid with the uh, the spirit of python it followed paul my god i want you to hear that a lot of times those who carry the spirit of python will follow a true prophetic voice they will follow they know you they know you but they they will watch you they will oh well this this is a prophet they'll watch you a lot of them will watch you don't don't think it's strange that a lot of them are following you even on your particular facebook broadcasting live they'll watch you they'll follow you on facebook Oh yes, they will. They'll follow you on Instagram. They'll follow you in your at your churches. And they will follow you just to see how you're operating. And the Bible said it like that. It says they uh, this particular maid followed the apostle Paul. Right? Crying, saying, These men are servants of the most high God who declare to us a way of salvation. False prophets know and understand, and they know sincere, authentic prophet they know it because when a true authentic prophet shows up they they take a step back they know that they no longer can be in operation when a true prophet show up that's what i'm saying those who operate in the spirit of python a, a, a spirit of divination or soothsaying or sorcery when a true prophet shows up you are a threat to them and so guess what if they don't come up against you they will try to agree with you my god my god my god if they don't try if they don't come up against you some of them will try to agree with you but ultimately those who are operating in the spirit of python they do it for gain they do it for much gain now there are a lot of people who have become susceptible to the spirit of python one moment please they have fall prey to the spirit of python 
The reason why they fall prey to the spirit of Python because they believe the false prophet. They believed a false prophet. They believed a false prophet. Watch this. Now, when you believe a false prophet and you open yourself, you, you open your, your, your gateways and you open yourself for false prophecy, now the spirit of Python comes in. This is why there are many people who are in need of deliverance today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch more about the Python spirit and characteristics of a false prophet in our next segment. But the moment you receive a false prophetic word, the moment you open up yourself to a false prophetic teaching, false prophetic word, false prophetic leadership,